Hi, my name is Matt. I've been doing photography as a serious hobby since 2009, and this year I started a company called Monstera Consulting. We offer professional photo and video services for small businesses, so that made 2024 the perfect time for me to buy a new camera. I did my research, and I settled on Fujifilm. I found a lot of creators on social media who were managing to put together these incredible shots and real beautiful film looks without going through the process of developing in Lightroom. I love this little X-T4. It's been just the right thing for me to make some 4K professional video. I've been having so much fun with this camera. It's amazing how far mirrorless has come since I bought that old DSLR back in the day. What I didn't realize is that I would end up saving myself a ton of time by using Fujifilm's color science as my primary photo processing tool, rather than bringing this raw file into Lightroom and spending a bunch of time pushing sliders around. So I wanted to share with you my basic editing workflow and how you can use XRAW Studio to get the results that you want and the high quality output that you're looking for really quickly. You've got this window on the right side which lets you set your film parameters. When I start processing a shoot, I select all the photos with Command A, and then I go down to my user profile and pick Provia Baseline. All this is, is a 000 total reset of the look. Provia is the most baseline film stock look you can get, and everything else here is set to the default flat values. And this lets me get a feel for what the photo originally looks like, so I can see where I want to go with it. Set all these values here, then go up to your user profile, hit save, and type Provia Baseline, and then hit OK. Click Command A, click Provia Baseline, and have it apply over the look that might have originally come with the image. Next step is to pick one of your favorite images from this session. Pick something that represents most of the other images in some aspect. The goal here is to get to a solid look for your session, and then apply it across the others and make minimal tweaks. So let's go with this one, you know, we see we've got some reds here, some yellows, we've got a nice clear blue sky, so I'm confident that whatever I do here will start to apply pretty well to the other images in the set. The first place I start is the film simulation, the digital version of the Fuji film stock that we're emulating in software. This is the setting that has the most impact on what you get. There are a few different looks here. Provia is the standard baseline look. This is going to be the most color accurate to real life. Velvia brings up the blues and greens and is particularly good for landscapes and nature photography. Astia soft is in the sense of skin tone, so it'll be pretty good for portraits. Classic Chrome, Proneg, Classic Neg, all have these nostalgic looks based on certain types of old film, like Classic Chrome is more like a Kodachrome, Classic Neg is probably what you were buying at Kmart. Eterna Bleach Bypass is a cold, wintry, a little bit more of a harsh look, so I like that nostalgic feel we're getting out of this film simulation to start. For me, the next step is to figure out what I want out of my highlights and my shadows. If my highlights are too hot, or if I'm having trouble with, say, real harsh lighting and I think it's just too much, you know, I might play around with derange priority. It brings the highlights way down and the shadows way up. If you don't want to go that far, an option is to bring the shadow tone to negative two to reduce the amount of impact the shadows have on the photo and do the same with the highlight tone as well. If I go to strong, I think it loses something of what I care about in the nostalgic film look, so I'm going to keep derange priority at weak. The next thing I go after is the white balance. A big trick I've noticed from people who are building their own presets here is to pick a fixed white balance with a fixed offset. Here I'm picking daylight, and then I'm going to go ahead and shift that white balance to try to get some more color out of the subjects in my scene. So whatever I pick here is really going to be based on how it makes the brick look. What we ended up picking was red 5, blue minus 2. The next place I look is color. It's going to be relatively minor compared to the choice you selected for your film simulation. I like a little bit more here, but not to the extreme, so let's go with plus two. We've already got plenty of red from the white balance bias and from the film simulation that we've selected. The next thing I check out is clarity. 
This has a big impact on the feel of the photo, even if we're not going after the color balance. What this does is when you kick up clarity to plus five, it's gonna severely pull apart the mid-tones in the photo. You're gonna see more blacks, more whites, and less stuff in the middle. In contrast, if you go down to negative five, you're gonna see that this starts getting washed out and it almost looks like you've put that Vaseline on the lens. And I like how that's a bit more gray here. I think that lets you keep the building as the subject rather than the sign in the middle. The next places I go are Color Chrome Effect and Color Chrome FX Blue. Color Chrome Effect is going to modify your reds, bring them down to the middle, make them feel more saturated, and blue is gonna do the same for your blues. The blue one in particular is a strong tool if you want to mess around with how your sky is feeling. Finally, I go to my grain effect. This is adding film grain after the fact, so you have to be really careful. I recommend you go to 1x to see what film grain you already have in the picture. If you're shooting at significant ISO, you've probably already got some texture and you may not need any more. Pan around a little bit to see what you've got. Pick a spot in the picture where you've got both a flat area and some texture to compare. Toss in some film grain and see what you think. You should know that strong is really strong here. So for this look that I'm going for, I like the large grain. I think this adds a bit of this being an older antique photograph that you pulled out of a shoebox in the attic. So this is all that I do to get to a basic look that I'm going to apply to the other stuff in this shoot. I copy this profile by right-clicking on the photo and selecting Copy Conversion Profile. Then I hit Command A, right-click again, and I hit Paste Conversion Profile. So this is why we didn't want to do any push-pull processing before this point, because if we had, it would take effect on all of these photos already. Let's tweak these individually to get them where we feel like we're happy with them. Let's play with a derange priority, and maybe we can just pull this down a notch. And that'll bring in some of the shadows in the road. Keep the focus on the center. This one will be a little bit different because we're shooting a different subject from a different angle of light. There's some bloom around these edges here. We can get a more moody look if we want to focus on the sunlight here. So I'm gonna bump this down just a notch. Help keep the light as the subject for this shot. I thought this was a pretty interesting set for these photos that are representative of each other, but very different, even though they were still taken on the same day during the same 30 minute interval. If you want to copy this over to your camera, right click on it, select copy user profile to camera custom setting, select a slot, and then hit save, and you can optionally rename it if you want. I use this as my library that I can pick from when I'm developing, I can load them back onto my camera, I can keep more than seven around. All you have to do to get these out is hit command A to select all of the photos, click convert in the lower right, and once this is done, you'll have these available to you in the original directory here. We've got everything we develop. Take one last look here for film grain. This is the one that's always tripped me up. Do some pixel peeping, make sure you're happy, and then you can take these straight to Lightroom. You've got plenty of room to work with these JPEGs now that you've developed them and you don't have to do any more color correction, modify any curves or anything. You can be happy with what you've got out of the camera here. So once I'm done with all that and I have the JPEGs from XRAW Studio, I usually import these back into Lightroom to do some basic processing. So this is stuff like cropping, rotating to line things up, but I'm usually not going back to stuff that I've already done in XRAW Studio. I'm not pushing the levels around. I've got 90% of the critical photo stuff done. What I find is that XRAW Studio does everything I need when it comes to compensating for exposure and getting to that overall look of the finished product that I want. I hope this gives you some ideas for your workflow and how you can get stuff done quickly and easily using Fujifilm XRAW Studio. If you do something differently, I'd love to hear about it. Leave a note in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you appreciated this video. It'll help me make more videos like this one.